Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. We're going to be reacting to this video about millionaires are more frugal than you. Most millionaires are extremely frugal. I've got a buddy that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and you wouldn't know it unless you hear him talking in a private setting that he has hundreds of millions of dollars. That's why I'm not going to share what his name is. Yeah, he has a nice house. He has a nice car. It's a Tesla. Not the super fast $250,000 Tesla, but it's a Tesla. And I would say he lives a heck of a lot more frugal than I do with the kind of money that he has. I would probably own some other things like boats and whatnot, but he doesn't. And again, because most millionaires surprisingly actually live frugal. Don't buy new if you can buy it used. Don't buy it all if you can rent. Why rent when you can borrow or barter? That's something else that is lost in today's society. We used to borrow and barter all the time. All right, Kirby, you say I'm the frugal one, but really this is all you, right? <laughs> this is all yeah. you. <laughs> all right, all right, the truth is, <laughs> I, 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 like the, I like the video because it just brings insight. And it's two things, two things in, in my personal life that, I mean, just happened recently. Um, a couple of things that he said that makes sense is that, millionaires are frugal everybody has a solution especially in this in this social media world that if you're a millionaire you should be buying lamborghinis ferraris big houses and you should be short off your money to the world this new social media age have people believing that's what you should do to you have to prove to the world that you're a millionaire and uh, a couple instances i go to friends and friends that I know locally and their houses are huge and things like that. And of course we, you know, we did the video, everybody's house looked better than mine. Um, and then, so me, every conversation, they only talk about how cheap I am or whatever. I mean, that's just, that's just a running conversation and it's funny. And I just, you know, I, I roll with it. I, I turn it to Alex when I get to those <laughs> environments, cause they just be amazed. Like you don't spend no money. And then, of course, there's people around that don't know me, but I'm usually having this conversation with the families of the house that I'm in, because those are the friends that I have. And then and then they always bring up like, man, why don't you live over here with us? You can buy two of these homes. Well, you could. And then everybody's looking like, I mean, the people that don't know us looking like, this cheap bastard got money? You know, like that, that's how they're looking at it, like, well, what the heck do we do? And in this society, that's what they believe. They believe the only way you can have money is if you show it. Um, me, I personally believe, and I learned this from my wife, is if you can see your net worth, you're doing it wrong. So if you can walk up to somebody's house and they have a big house, they have you know four or five cars in the driveway, and that encompasses their net worth, then they're doing it wrong. Me, your net worth should not be seen. True net worth should not be seen. So what I mean by not be seen, I mean owning businesses, you know, owning real estate, having a uh, a nice size portfolio for retirement and for non-retirement accounts. That's that's where the net worth should be at. And then uh, another instance was I was talking to a a, a little teenager. I don't, I don't want to call him little, but I was talking to a teenager yesterday. And we was talking about millionaires. And then, and then she asked a question. She said, You talk, she said, you talk about money a lot, but how can you talk about money if you don't have the money that they have? And then that's she asked. I mean, it was a good question. And then I was like, What do you mean? What do you call money? She was like, a millionaire. And I was like, Well, I'm that. And she was like, wait, what? I can Google you and find it. So people believe the only people that are millionaires are people that you can Google and see their net worth, not knowing that the net worth they have for anybody on there is incorrect. And then the whole conversation changed just by saying I became more believable just because I said the word, yeah, millionaire. And it's, I'm like, the concepts don't change. And frugality is the way to get there. If you don't have the money to invest, you save the money to invest. You store the money to invest in different arenas. That's how you get to, you know, millionaire status. Unless you, you know, white collar executive directors of companies, you can't save your way to a million dollars. 
especially with the average median income being around sixty thousand uh, dollars a year household income. You can't save your way to get there. The money that you have, no matter how much you make, you have to live on less than you make to invest, to do stuff, do something else. It's not about, oh, I got to get this money and go buy this big car so my neighbors can think that I have money. Most people that that have, that li that you know live in a neighborhood and they got the fanciest car in the neighborhood, their net worth is that car. They slaving, going to work day in, day out, day in, day out, just to buy that car to make everybody else think they have money. Me, like you've seen in the short, me, I drive an ordinary, inconspicuous car. I'd rather people think that I don't have any money. Because there's less people ask for money, less people trying to do nefarious things to try to get money. I mean, we talked about people trying to... Uh, you know, people know somebody got money. You know, they try to get in a car accident. They see they got hit by a Lambo. And then now everybody's paralyzed. You know, things like that. You don't you don't want everybody to know because once people know what you are, then you become a target for the rest of the world. And there's a lot of nefarious people out here in the world. But Alex, you are Mr. Frugal 101. So go ahead. What you got? No, man. Kirby, he, he's frugal. Okay. I mean, Kirby, like, he's just not frugal when he's out. He's buying drinks, buying food, whatever. But there, I, I do remember that one time we were at a restaurant and you couldn't find your discount. You were like, what the hell? <laughs> like, oh, Kirby, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that discount was, that's, that discount was brutal, man. <laughs> man. Like, nah, I'm always looking for discounts. But go ahead. But no, it's absolutely true what, um, what he's saying. And I mean, we always discuss, Buy things based off your net worth in a sense, you know, like people that like cars, that like houses and stuff. It's different when like you see, you know, because people I, I can already see like the hate comments or whatever, like Jeff Bezos buying hundred million dollar properties or homes or whatever. But Jeff Bezos is worth hundreds of billions. Like when you're it's he's not buying a 50 billion dollar house. You know what I mean? So it's it's all it's all based off of net worth. We did shorts on it with the car you have. It's less than 1% of your net worth, you know? I mean, and if you had $200 million, a Lamborghini would be less than 1%. So, you know, you see people right. buying cars like that as well that are in the hundreds of millions or the billions of dollars, and it it's really nothing to them. So, yeah, there are millionaires that spend money like that, but it's very little compared to what they actually have. And so for those that, you know, when you are first starting and you're trying to actually build wealth, you don't want to be, as they say, um, treating yourself in that sense. You know, oh, you worked so hard, you should go spend money on a brand new car and buy this or buy a, buy a five, six bedroom house when you don't need it. I mean, most... Most families aren't even five, six people anymore. It's, you know, a couple and maybe one kid or two kids, which is a three bedroom house at that, you know, two, three bedroom house. So you see a lot of families that have these um, toys, these big toys, you know, and yeah, I mean, they, they live to, they work to pay that. That is, that's their net worth, a big house, all the cars. But when you can keep your expenses low, as we talk about, and it doesn't necessarily mean you always have to live in like a little shack and drive a beater. But, you know, if you can pay off a eight, ten thousand dollar car, in most cases, that's a good car. And then if you can live in a basic house and then just keep that while you build, you know, while you build everything, build your investments or pay rent even. But. Yeah, I would agree as well that most millionaires, they are more frugal because they're more conscious of their money because they are telling their money where to go and they want it to grow. They don't want to just blow the money that they're receiving. Yeah. And and everybody always wonder, I mean, Alex, I know you get this question a lot, is when do you enjoy it? People, we're not talking about doing this the rest of your life. We're talking about doing this a short amount of time. I'll just give you an example. So in 2008, 2008, yeah, 2008, 250K in debt. So that's 2008. By 2016, 
Like 2016, all the debt was erased. Millionaire. That was eight years. That's eight years. I just keep choosing to go the route of being frugal to keep growing it bigger and bigger and bigger. So when I make a purchase, the 1% that I use is the 1% I use for a purchase of something that I want, like a car or something, is a lot less compared to my net worth. But the reason why I kept going, because I realized how much money is just getting thrown away on a day-to-day -day basis because people are not paying attention. The one thing that this will do is once you become conscious about your money, you're not just trying to give it away to everybody just for the sake of it. Because you knew consciously what you had to go through to get the money. You're not just giving it away. When you start focusing on the money, then the money start, I'll say it another way. Once you start treating money right, right and this is what I seen when, when I was $250,000 in debt, I was the guy. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to the club. Let's spend money. Let's swipe cards. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, YOLO, you know, spend it because you can't take it with you. I was that guy. I was that guy. But soon as I started being conscious of money and taking care of money and doing right by money, magically, money always came, found ways to come to me. Ideas start coming. How to make more. How to make more. It's just like once you start being a good steward of money, you become a magnet for more money. So like the real estate deals, I mean, Alex, even sometimes, you know, I, I send you deals, but how the hell are you find that? It's just, they come, it's like, they just come to you with deals. Like, uh, I didn't, I mean, I, I think I texted you about it. Like the, the business venture we just did with the, um, in Texas, that's, I, I won't go into, go to it. They reached out to my company. My company didn't reach out to them. They reached out to us on a humble and then created that deal because we're good stewards of money. I mean, of course, we operate excellent, but we're good stewards of money and we can find you. But let's cut this video on because we don't want to go through the scene because we could talk about this forever. So go ahead. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.